Hi, I'm Dr. Jamil Sayaj. And on this podcast, we're going to talk about some deep stuff. I'm here to tell you that you're amazing. And often, the only person who can't see that is you. No matter who you are, what you do, or where you're from, there's greatness in you. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jamil Syed, life business and relationship coach, and welcome to the Transformation Starts Today podcast, where I interview leaders, champions, and high performers from all walks of life as they share their story, the lessons they've learned along the way, and powerful insights to help you create an extraordinary life without regret starting today. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from a truly incredible person, a client of mine, a fierce and powerful creator, the one and only Carol Mack. With over 20 years of experience, Carol Mack's mission is to enhance joy, inspiration, and empowerment through food, wine, and lessons she learned from her beloved late son, TJ. She is a food personality, author, producer, speaker, and host. Her best-selling children's picture book, The Gift of the Ladybug, has started a nationwide movement of how to accept difficult diagnoses with peace, power, and love. Carol has been featured on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, USA Today and Glamour. Carol, it is truly a privilege and an honor to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You're the best coach ever. I just had to, that has to be the first thing I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How are you today? You changed my life. I am great. I'm so happy to be with you. This is awesome. Yeah, very excited to be with you. And I can't wait for the audience to hear you have such a beautiful transformational story and what you're doing now in the world is so inspiring and I can't wait for everyone else to experience you who doesn't know you yet. And so I'd love to dive right in. I have found that successful people often have a hero story, you know, challenges, adversities they've overcome to get to where they are now. If you would please share with us, what is your hero story? Ah, that's such a good question. Yeah, I would say my hero story is transcending the loss of my son TJ. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was just such a blow. And it was my, my worst nightmare. Like my entire life prior to losing TJ was fear of sickness and death of the people I loved. I don't know. It was like in my cells and in my bones when I was like five years old. Um, and, and so when it actually happened to me and my only child, it was larger than life. And my son taught me how to transcend really anything that's externally going on in your life he had like more peace and power and love um in his eyes and his heart and his soul and he taught me that you can do you can do anything in your life and um regardless of your external circumstances like he lived with power with a terminal illness and by doing that he modeled living with power so i figured if he did that i can live with power if I have to lose him. And so once I lost him, I, I just went to TJ school. So, um, I just worked on embodying the stories that he taught the, the lessons that he taught me and, um, was able to transcend grief. And I can say honestly, and truly, I didn't think it was possible for three years that I feel like 100% better again, myself again, good again, and a cellular level, like the loss doesn't define me. Grief doesn't define me. And, um, I'm, I would say I'm more, like more compassionate, more loving, more, um, grounded, more, um, have so much more self-love, less anxiety than before I lost him. Mm. So I made it through. Yeah, you did. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I want to first acknowledge you that I personally don't have kids, but what I've been told by so many parents that I know some parents that have lost children and I've been told, you know, it's the hardest thing that could ever happen to you. And to be able to go through it, come out the other side and to have learned and grown so much. And then now to be making such a big difference in the world and in the lives of others, because of what you've gone through, it's, it's, there's a spiritual strength. There's a muscle that's developed that is very apparent in your sharing. And so thank you so much for sharing that and for modeling to everyone who's listening, 
you know, whether you're going through what Carol's going through or has gone through rather now, but it also you've got whatever else, your hardship, your challenge is, you know, she represents the possibility of what you can do in your own life. You know, if she could overcome this, you know, what's possible for you, right? And so Carol, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what are some of the kind of the primary maybe lessons that you took from the experience that are stay with you to this day that really are guiding lights for you? Oh, so many. Um, one was like more of a tactic of how to get through struggle. And I call it the art of acceptance. And it's allow art, A, allow, R, release, T, trust. And this is something that like when you become overcome with emotion from whatever you're going through, um, I think the tendency for some of us, it, or certainly for me growing up was like, I don't want to face it. I don't want to Ew, it's not pretty. It's not happy. It's not cheerful. It's not okay. But I taught myself to allow it and you have to feel it to heal it. Mm. And so I allowed all the icky, gross, most ugly feelings that came through all the way through me and then release them. Like I got a punching bag. I punched them out. I wrote them out in journals. I cried them out. I talked them out to my friends. I screamed in pillows and somehow I would get it out. And I would like name it, the thing that I was most sad or hurt or angry about. And then somehow it would just dissipate a little and then trust that I can handle, I can handle it. Even if I didn't believe I could trust that you can trust that there's something greater than you helping you trust that this is all serving you in some way. And it will make sense later and um, trust that you can do it. So that's one technique, the art of acceptance that legitimately helped me heal from the inside out, like at a cellular level. Um, and then the lessons from TJ, just like I said, he, just by watching him, for instance, one story is, um, he had a spinal tap one time and I mean, spinal taps I've heard, I have not had one, but I've heard it's the most painful thing in the world. And he was at the, you know, he's at the hospital and he, you know, he's crying. Of course it's painful. They put the spinal tap in and he just, he went to sleep. He's just, I'm out, peace out. I, and went to sleep during a spinal tap. And I was like, that is the secret to life. Like, how are you so brilliant to be able to just do that? And another time he had like 26 electrodes in his head and it wasn't painful. And he had the biggest laugh I've ever seen. So it was like it during and through things that are difficult, you can still manage yourself and have peace and power and love. Um, so that was another thing that he taught me. And I think the third thing is, um, that you're perfect exactly as you are, because he was 100% accepting of him and his life. He's like, yep, I have like, he, I have a terminal illness. Yep. This is really hard and I'm perfect. And that was how he approached life from his energy and demeanor. And everyone that I know saw that in him. And that's one of the most powerful things I've ever learned too. Thank you for sharing those with us. And I strongly encourage anyone listening who's going through hard times right now. First of all, if it's someone else that you know is going through a hard time, please share this so Carol's story can you know, impact them. But notice that she shared actionable things that you could be doing on a day-by-day -day basis to help you through the darker moments, the challenging times, the times of doubt. And also notice that it's not an overnight thing. It was a process that she went through of healing. And giving yourself some grace, giving yourself that forgiveness, that compassion, that love, that respect to say, you know, day by day, it will get easier. And day by day, I will heal. And life will, there will be happiness again in my yes. world. And not putting so much pressure on yourself to have it all figured out today. Yeah, definitely. And so Carol, if you wouldn't mind sharing the few things that you shared that brought up in my mind the gift of the ladybug and can you tell our listeners what that is and you know it's such an inspiring story definitely so the gift of the ladybug is my children's book inspired by tj and it came to me the day he was diagnosed with a terminal illness and it's basically the story of these two horses who have a ladybug son and the son teaches the horses that he's perfect exactly as he is and um that he was meant to be this way. And that metaphor is something that came to me in a flash, literally on the way home from the Cleveland clinic, as we had just heard this diagnosis and it came to me in a flash. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this is how we're going to get through it. Like this, 
oh my gosh, this just changed our entire lives. Like TJ is okay. He's meant to be this way. He's not, he's supposed to be this way. And so when I had this metaphor come to me in a flash, I thought, you know what, this is, this is the most powerful way we can, we can do this whole thing. And TJ became a perfect ladybug instead of a child who was sick, instead of a child who should be aging just like everyone else. He was just a perfect ladybug living his exact right life. And it's, it's exactly what TJ taught me with his eyes and demeanor. But the fact that it came to me in a flash, in a metaphor that was easy to put in a five minute book for children and their families, um, it was just completely a divine inspiration. Um, and so when I got home from that uh, Cleveland Clinic uh, appointment, I wrote the book in a couple days and um, a couple hours, a couple days later, found it and read it to him for Christmas. So, and he just became our ladybug and everybody's ladybug. Yeah. For something that you did so masterfully that I hope people who are listening pick up on and apply in their own life, mm-hmm. you completely re- released resistance. Yeah. And noticing that that for, for anyone listening, releasing resistance does not mean you're okay with the situation or that you condoned it or wanted it or anything like that. But when you release resistance, you know, what, one, a common metaphor I often share with people that I probably told Carol probably 30 times <laughs> in the last six months is if it's raining outside and I come from the headspace that I'm really upset because it's not supposed to be raining, but it is raining. So if it's not supposed to be, but it is, well, the rain doesn't care. It's just going to keep raining. But here I am going to allow my emotional state to be depressed and be sad and upset and frustrated for something that is going on, regardless of whether I want it to be or not. So what if we let go of the resistance and say, you know, this thing is happening. Now, maybe we can do something about it. Maybe we can't. But let's meet it from a space of acceptance, because from acceptance, we can change. And from acceptance, at least we can come to peace. And so in Carol's book, which I've had the pleasure to read several times, you know, spoiler alert, right? (laughs) But when (laughs) when you have the two horses and they have this ladybug in the beginning, they think something's wrong. It's like, you know, what's going on? You know, this ladybug isn't a horse. But once that shifted to, no, no, we have a beautiful baby son who's a ladybug and he's perfect as he is, given that he's a ladybug. Oh yeah, we gallop, he flies. We live a certain amount of time, he lives a certain amount of time, but it's perfect as it is. There's a level of peace that comes over you just from that level of non-resistance. And so is there anything you would add to that, Carol? Oh, it was so beautifully said and so perfectly put. I think that's the biggest thing that TJ taught me. He didn't fight, like he didn't fight the doctors. He didn't, um, you know, when he came into the hospital, he didn't cry out of fear. Like there was no fear. It was just, he had pain. He didn't have fear. And fear really truly is the thing that's the scariest of all. And, and so that is a level of just letting go of resistance, letting go of the fear part. You're still gonna have to do the thing, but it's not now 1 million times harder because of the fear. It's yeah. just the hard, the thing itself. And um, it doesn't have to be a problem like you teach. It doesn't have to be a problem unless we make it a problem. And I was certainly making it a problem. And I definitely did for at least three years after he passed away. But at the same time, I knew better. I mean, it was like I was walking the line and um, at least I knew it was possible that it didn't have to be a problem. And so I treated it as not a problem, even though I didn't want it to be there and exist, right? Um, Because that's what TJ taught. Yeah, what's coming to mind, there's a Dalai Lama quote where he says, if something can be done, then there's no need to worry. And if nothing can be done, then worry is of no use. Now, if we think about it with the first part, if something can be done, so if you can do something about it, Mm -hmm. no need to worry, because why waste time doing that when you can take action and fix it? But if nothing can be done, so no matter what you do, it's still going to happen, then worry is of no use because it's, you're just making yourself feel bad. Mm-hmm. And the, what came to mind when you were sharing that was, you know, God forbid we found out I have one year to live mm-hmm. and me and you are together and we can't do anything about it. So if it's a guarantee I have one year to live, we could spend the next six months kind of really in sadness and complaining about why it's not fair. Mm-hmm. which is fine. People want to do that. They're fair to do that. 
the but what if we just committed this next year is going to be the most beautiful year possible every day is going to be a miracle every day is going to be an adventure it's going to be full of laughter and love and light and so many wonderful experiences because we're choosing to do that and then we'll see what happens in a year if it was true that I, there was nothing that could have been done then that was it but i had the greatest year of my life and if it's not true awesome we fe- we figured out a way you know but oftentimes we're in so much resistance to life how it's unfolding that we're making it so much harder for ourselves. Oh, yeah, so much harder. And I feel like I was a, a bit of the queen of that. So it was so transformative to watch a human model living in peace in the thing that I was most scared of. Like, oh my gosh, that's possible. So if he did it now, I have to do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, on the legacy. <laughs> here's my work. Okay, buckle up, Buttercup. You got some work to do. <laughs> So for anyone who's listening, who is going through, you know, their version of what you went through, do you have any advice or any, something you could share from your heart to theirs? Um, like you said, self grace, like that was so key. Um, I've been very hard on myself in my life. I used to like withhold my own like self love and pride and admiration until I got a goal. And, and I thought that that was making me a champion and tough and all of these things. And I learned through losing TJ, like I I didn't have the strength to do that. I didn't, I couldn't physically do it. So I learned that you can have so much more compassion and grace with yourself. Not always. Um, I was, was I able to do it, but majority of the time I was, and I really developed a relationship with myself that was like, it's really pure love now. And, um, if you can, can go at whatever you're facing with more grace and love and self dates. And like, I went and got myself lipstick at Mac. I took myself, took myself on dates. I wrote myself love letters on Valentine's day. You know, I, um, that kind of, you could do those kinds of things. Really self grace will help you through any personal transformation or getting through tough times. Mm, Well said. And for everyone listening, you know, Carol, you and I have spoken about this wherever you're going through right now, your next breakthrough will never come from more judgment. It will only come from higher levels of self-love, self-respect, acknowledgement, forgiveness, Mm -hmm. things like that, right? And and so where are we judging ourselves? You know, life shouldn't be going this way. Oh, I messed that up. It's my fault. That's just going to make us feel worse and worse and worse. But if we can come from that space of acceptance, that space of surrender, Again, not surrender as in like the way we often interpret it in the West of like a loss or something like that, but surrender as in loving what is. Life is happening the way it's happening. Let me fully embrace it. And once I meet it there, that's my chance to change it. If it's possible, that's where I change it. But there's an old expression, whatever you resist, persist. What you put energy into, you feed. So if you're putting energy into all the things you don't want, you get more of it. And then you wonder, why is this still happening? Why do I still feel this way? Because you're fighting it. But when you can move through it, it's amazing, like the magic that happens when that release happens. Yeah. 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 And so, Carol, using going back to the gift of the ladybug, I understand that there is a national gift of the ladybug day. Can you tell us about that, what that's all about, how people can participate in that if they'd like to? Oh, that's so fun. Yes. Thank you so much. So TJ's birthday is January 28th. And this past uh, TJ's birthday on January 28th, we got nationally registered for a national gift of the ladybug day congratulations (laughs) this is a day to celebrate all children with critical illness so these kids are just heroes they teach us all how to live it's kind of a segment of the population i'm in absolute awe of and now we have a national day to celebrate them and honor them it's about more about honoring them and um we can do that in any way visit kids in the hospital Um, call a friend who has a child and tell them that you love them. Uh, Certainly you could buy a gift of the ladybug book or stuffed polka dot. How cute are stuffed polka dot Mm, Um, for a child at make a wish on um, gift of the ladybug.com. We do that all year long, but um, we'll definitely be doing that on the gift of the ladybug day for sure. And we also give books uh, to hospitals and things like that. So, but you could do that in your own way. And um, just how do you honor a child with a critical illness in any way, shape, or form? Um, it's a beautiful thing to celebrate and honor on January 28th. 
And if I can just kind of further give a shout out to the book, and if you could, uh, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, elaborate on it. There was a, mo it was something you shared with me a few months back. It was so beautiful. There was a gentleman who read your book and he said, since reading this book, I got my son back. Could you share like that or some variation, some stories of the impact so people can see, you know, what this book is really doing to the lives of not only children, but parents too. Oh, yeah. So there was a man who let me, who gave me an email, sent me an email after he read my book. This has been years ago. And he said, look, I have a child who's 19 with autism. And throughout his entire 19 year life, I've always thought of him as so different and from me. And it was a problem for me. And we really didn't get along. And he said, I read your book. And all of a sudden he went from being, a, it, autism went from being a problem to being completely okay. And oh my gosh, he's a ladybug. And he said, literally, I, from that moment on, I looked at my son completely different and we've been having weekly call calls and you gave me my son back. You gave him me back. And really this paradigm shift has changed both of our lives forever. And I was just in tears, but that's what, that's one example. We, yeah. We're lucky to get these all the time from, yeah. from people, which is amazing. So for people who would love to be a part of this, they'd love to support, what are some ways they could do that? Sure. So you can go to giftoftheladybug.com and there's a pop-up and you could donate books and ladybugs to kids at Make-A-Wish. You could donate books to hospitals. You could buy a gift and a, a stuffed pick, polka dot for someone in your life that may have had a difficult diagnosis or just has a difference of any kind, really. Mm. Um, those are a few ways that you could, and everything um, has a percentage going to make a wish as well. Yeah. So it's all going to great causes and it, it really helps. It helps the community. I mean, some of the moms have called me and they're like, okay, I loved my book. Someone gave it to me. I need 30 more because I want everyone in my life to read this, to understand what I'm going through. So it's one of those that sort of has a ripple effect. Um, it's, it's almost more for adults than it is for kids, but kids love it too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And for anyone who, who's dying to like dive into this and contribute, I'm going to put all the links in the show notes. And you mentioned Make-A-Wish and I understand you have a partnership with them. Could you please share with us about that? Yeah, it's so exciting. So uh, partnership with Make-A-Wish Metro New York. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have a program on giftofladybug.com that pop up where you can buy books and stuff ladybugs directly for kids. And we just send it to their offices in New York. And I'm going to get to go and have like open them with some of the kids and give them with some of the kids. It's so exciting. And again, a, a percentage on top of that goes to make a wish. So actually anything you ever buy will give percentage to make a wish, but we can also go directly to them uh, with the gifts, which is really fun. Yeah, and the the thing I think is so fantastic is in a situation like this, it's like you you get to help twice. <laughs> yeah, you get to help twice, yeah. and it's so it's so fun because we have such a uh, uh, what's the word? Such a I'm not thinking of the correct word. Aligned mission, make a wish, and I, and it's all, yeah. and so that's why their leadership and and we've had such so many wonderful conversations because we're all about celebrating the child and not we're we're not trying to change anything. I mean, we would love to change everything, believe me, but if it can't be changed, we're just there to um, honor the child exactly as the child is and celebrate them for who they are and bring joy and love and peace into their life. And it's just such an aligned mission that it just felt very called to join and partner with them for, for everything. Mm. Thank you so much. I like, I love that we really dove into you know, the gift of the ladybug and TJ's story and your story and how it all comes together to make such a positive impact in the world. And if you don't mind, I'd love to make a shift in our conversation to a different project that I understand you're working out called Psalm Insider. Can you tell ah. us about that, please? Psalm School Insider. Yeah, of course. So Psalm School Insider is a show that I created a seven episode series following my journey inside Psalm School at the Sommelier Society of America, which is the oldest wine school in the country. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's a series that really teaches everyone how to ha have fun and make wine accessible, but it's with my real instructors in real time. And it's like the camera crews came in school with me legit. And we took the exam and like, do I pass? What grade do I get? It's all like real and legit in real time. And it's, 
and I mess up. Oh yeah. And I, and we do blindfold taste and it's just so fun. You can binge the whole thing in 40 minutes. They're really fun, short episodes, but it's just a snapshot of what Psalm school can teach you. And I mean, if you're just a wine enthusiast, it can just trans, it can really, really enhance your wine knowledge in 40 minutes. It's on Roku and on wine for food.com wine, the number four food.com. And it's just a really fun, awesome. It was my first full series of seven episodes that I've written, you know, directed, starred in as well. Very fun and produced. It's funny, uh, in, in preparation for our conversation, I, I told some people I was going to be in a conversation with you and they said, oh, tell her I love wine. <laughs> 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 so you might be getting some, uh, some calls. You know? Oh, good, good. Well, I love wine too. So yes. <laughs> That's perfect. And so I'll definitely have the links as well in, in the show notes so people can check this out. That's so exciting. Yay. And so something that I want to share with, with, you know, you know this and the foundation of everything that I do is helping people create an extraordinary life without regret. If you could share with us for you, what is an extraordinary life without regret? What does that look like? Ooh, ooh that's so good. Well, I feel like I'm pretty close to living it now, which is mm. really cool. Thanks to awesome. you. you, you. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's a lot of reflection. And when you reflect on yourself, like what must you do before you die? So I ask myself that question a lot. Like what must, what's on my heart that I must get out into the world in order for me to die peacefully? <laughs> and I kind of put myself there um, at the end of my life and, and, you know, I have to write a book. I have to write a memoir. I have to have a show. I have to, there's just a few things that I just, I have to at least try. I, I can't guarantee they're going to go well, or it's going to work, but I must try them. And then I just come up with a roadmap to do those things. Um, the other thing I must do is tell everyone I love them a lot. Like I'm a big, fierce, like affectionate person. That's maybe profuse. Is that the word? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I want to tell everyone I love them and exactly how I feel about them on a regular daily basis so that, so they know nobody's wondering, guessing. So again, I can go at any moment and, and I've lived really, I've loved fiercely and I've lived my dreams. So that's the biggest thing. And then when I have to, when I want to have those hard, no, when I don't want to have the hard conversations, but I know I need to do it and the hard things do them because I know, again, I won't have regret. If I know it's something I need to do, just, you just do it. Yeah. I knew I liked you for a reason. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We've got such a similar perspective on, on life. And for anyone listening, notice what Carol said, given you know what it is that I want in the world, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get it, but I, at least I'm going to try. You know, Because if you don't try, you fail by default. If you don't try, the answer is always no. And so oftentimes throughout so many times in my life, I've had people tell me there's something that they want and then, but what if, you know, it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't go well? What, and all the negatives of that are going to deter them from trying, but what if you can, or you can answer that way, but you can flip it and go up that staircase. And well, what if it does work out? What if it works out even better than I can possibly imagine? What if it's the greatest decision I've ever made in my life? And it leads me to, it's the unlock to everything I, I want. And that was what life was waiting for me to do. Like, who knows? That's equally as possible as the other questions. And so we hold ourselves back from trying. And so I love, you know, your, your kind of framework of what must I do before I die? You know, a similar, but you know, slightly different version that I typically share. If I was going to go to bed tonight and my head hits the pillow and, you know, it's like God or the universe or life or an angel or something, or just intuition tells me you're not going to wake up tomorrow. Could I go to sleep right now and fall asleep in peace, knowing that my life up until this point, I have no issues with it. It was beautiful. It was an adventure. I'm grateful for it. No regrets. That doesn't mean there's not things I still wanted to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you said, are there things in my life that I've wanted to do, but I've been living in fear, playing small and holding myself back from? Are there people in my life that I really love and care about and they don't know that mm -hmm. I love and care about them? You know, oftentimes I find that we live from this headspace of thinking people in our life, especially the ones closest to us, are like mind readers. And that because, oh, I told them I loved them, you know, 14 years ago, they know I love them. <laughs> you know? And it's just like, no, you got to show it. It's not just show it, you know, but tell it too. People like to hear it. 
And when you come from that space of, hey, I just want to acknowledge you. I want to recognize you. I want to appreciate you. Hey, you mean so much to me. When you did that, I felt this. Like whatever it is that you could be expressing verbally and through your actions, the more the better. You know, it's like the people, one of the biggest regrets of the dying that were, um, it was a hospice care study. And one of the, I think it was number three, but one of the top five is I wish I told the people, well, it's a slightly uh, nuanced version of it, but it's like, I wish I told the people that I love how much I love them. I think that the actual is like, I wish I, ex- I allowed myself to express my feelings to the people that I care about, but you know, different, but same. And so look at your own life. Where are you living a life that you're going to regret? Where are you living from this place of procrastination? You know, anyone who's tuned into the first episode of the podcast where I shared my story, I go into a lot of this and this whole idea, where am I living a life that I'm going to regret? Where am I procrastinating and thinking I'll get to that tomorrow or that dream, that thing I'd love? I'll do that when I retire. Meanwhile, you're like 14 years away from retiring. Why are you (laughs) going to wait that long? Because you're taking a big risk and gamble. First, that you're going to make it to retirement. And second, that you're going to have enough time after to even enjoy it. When you can actually start moving in that direction now, that doesn't mean kind of bringing it full circle, similar to a Carol story, healing that isn't necessarily overnight in that same way, whatever you're building as a dream in your life, it's probably not going to get built overnight, but your life literally changes in an instant when you start taking a new direction, a step, a new path, because you're going to end up in a completely different place, but you start. There's that, I think it's Lao Tzu, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with Mm -hmm. a single step. You got to get started sometime. Why not get started now? You know, I, I often tell people that the past and the future don't exist. The past exists only in your memory and the future exists only in your imagination. There is only now, which means your seat of power, your source of transformation is the present moment. So your future is going to look a lot like your present unless you do something different in the present. But the moment you decide, you know what? I'm not going to wait till I retire. I'm not going to wait till whatever the thing is, a a month, a year, six months, whatever from now. I'm going to start moving in that direction now. I'm going to call that person, have that conversation. I'm going to invest in that thing. I'm going to do whatever it is to get me on the path. I'm going to join the Psalm School. You know, I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do. That gets you started. And then you keep taking steps every day. What can I do today that brings me one step closer? You know, when when I lived in Arizona, when I was in med school for five years and I got into hiking and I hiked so many different mountains. And there was this perspective that was really fascinating to me that when you're going up the mountain, typically you're not stopping and turning around. So you're going, you're going, you're going, and maybe you're having great conversations. Maybe you're taking in the the beauty of the nature around you. At some point though, you stop to take a break and maybe then you kind of turn around and all of a sudden there's a view and you're like, oh my gosh, we're so high. Like, how did this happen? one step at a time you get there but when you're on the bottom of the mountain looking up and you just go i don't think we should go (laughs) it looks so high you know can we actually make it to the top but if you just focus on your next step and your next step you will get there Mm -hmm. you know i think it was mark twain but regardless of who it was the idea is that 20 years from now like the time will pass anyway you know the mark twain quote is 20 years from now you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things that you did. And another variation of it, which is just completely just left me, (laughs) but that's okay. The first one works. What are you gonna regret not doing? And then let's step into it now. It's amazing what how quickly life changes when you step into it now. Oh, it's so true. I just wanted, while you were talking, I just wanted to show these, this is something that you told me that I wrote down right here. And this is legitimately just like stuck up. Do something your future self will thank you for make someone smile and live as if you can't fail. And those are three things you told me. And I wrote, and this big, you know, live as if you can't fail is what we're talking about right now. But that I read on a daily basis. And it's so true. Like, okay, but what if you can't fail? What if it does work? Do that thing. Take one step because progress is all you can do. Just one step, one step, one step. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you for that. I'm glad. I didn't know the post it was there. That's awesome. And also, (laughs) and also keeping in mind just to go with that theme, You really can't fail because for everyone listening, failure is a concept. Mm. Failure only exists in language. There is no such thing as failure. Now, we have the definition of what we think failure is, but notice that you only fail when you've declared that, when you've labeled it. If I tried something and I didn't get the result I wanted, did I fail? No, I got a different result 
I successfully got a different report <laughs> not what I want it though. So I can, <laughs> I can be with it. I can reflect on it. I can learn from it and I can go, all right. So whatever I did created that result. I don't want that. So what needs to be tweaked and what needs to be done differently? Course correct. Do it again. Now, either you're spot on, you get it. Cool. Or you're a little closer, but you're still off. You don't fail. In my, in my mind, you don't fail unless you quit at something that you would have loved to continue. Ooh. If there's something so that you're <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> so, yeah, As you, usual. <laughs> if, if you're sitting there thinking, you know, this thing, it's on my heart. I love it. It's my dream. I really want to do it. But you know, it's hard. And then you quit. Mm. That to me, if there is, if there is a failure, that's failure. Not you tried and it didn't work out. That's life. Like that's just how it works. You know, you, yeah. like you, there's a mentor of mine years ago. He told me, you know, you know, you fail until you succeed. Like that's how you get there. <laughs> it really so, is. Failure is the path to success. So if you think 100%. failure is the problem and you don't want to fail, you're never going to reach the heights that you could because you're going to always hold yourself back. But what if you embraced failure? What if you said, you know, one of my backgrounds is in NLP, neuro linguistic programming, and one of the tenets of NLP, excuse me, is that there is no failure, there's only feedback. And so that same kind of idea, I took an action, I got a result. All right, did I is that what I wanted? And if not, let's let's shift, let's do something about it. What if you just yep. approached your life like that? If and kids do that too. I often see people with language, for example. I was talking, I was actually on a podcast with this wonderful woman named Barbara. And she speaks like four or five different languages. And it's a whole fascinating podcast. And um, we talked about this idea that oftentimes adults will say, you know, I only speak, you know, this language or these languages, and I can't really learn more because I'm old. And they say, you know, it's so easy for kids. The primary reason from my perspective that it's so easy for children to learn, and it seems so hard for many adults to learn, is children have not yet learned shame and judgment and fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because yep. if, I'm, if I'm coming from the space of I'm afraid of what you're going to think about me if I mess up I'm afraid of what I'm going to look like I've got a reputation I got to protect I'm going to be afraid to try and, every, and when I do try it's going to be a I'm only going to try to the point where I know I can do it because I want to look good but if, as long as you do that you never push the boundary you never grow so you stay small but a little kid that's learning how to walk they get up, they fall, they get up, they fall. They don't quit. They just eventually get it. They're learning how to speak. They babble, they babble. And then eventually there's a word and it just happens. <laughs> you know? But it's the same thing. You're learning how to ride a bike. You're learning anything. You figure it out over time. So what if you check the ego, you check the failure, the shame, all that kind of judgment stuff. And you say, you know, yeah. we're all on our own journey. And this is something that matters to me. This is important mm -hmm. to me. I want to be good at this. I want to yeah. get, I want to really learn this then put in the hours, put in the practice, allow yourself to fail. If you want, again, you're using the common, yep. commonly used definition of it, allow yourself to fail. And then as the expression goes, fail forward and fail quickly. And mm -hmm. the more you do that, life just starts to get together and it works. And so I'm going to, I can probably go for another four hours. So I'm going to pause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we move forward, anything you'd like to add to that, Carol? I just love that. It's, I mean, the idea that what do we make failure mean? What if you meet, what if you make what you consider failure mean you're getting closer? What if every failure is one step closer, which it is. And I mean, I was a gymnast for my, most of my life <laughs> and, <laughs> and you just fail. Like you have to fall. 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 I mean, how long do we have? And then one time you'll get it a little better and a little better. And all of a sudden, okay, now you're getting it every time. Okay. Now you do the next thing that makes you fall, fall, fall. And there's no way to become a master of anything unless you're willing to just fall on your face a bunch, a bunch. Yeah. But if we make that mean that we're closer every time and, oh, I need to tweak this and ooh, a little internal shift here. And okay, I'm going to not make it mean this. And you're just, you're closer, you're closer, you're closer. So what do we make failure mean, I think is the key. What do we make anything mean is the key to all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was about to open up a whole thing. I'm like, oh, no. okay. that was not <laughs> <laughs> And so I'd love to ask you, Carol, you know, we, we just got off talking about what an extraordinary life without regret you know, entails for you. So in service of that extraordinary life, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is 
one of the biggest changes you'd love to make over the next 12 months for yourself? Ooh, that's such a good question. Um, the biggest changes. Well, I mean, one of the things that I, hmm, I don't even know how to answer that. The biggest changes, because I'm not sure it requires a change so much. I mean, little micro changes every day. But one of the things that I really want in my life, I have this dream show. It's called Food Bliss. And it's about making culinary dreams come true for the purpose of joy and transformation. And it's what I did for myself to use my passion for food to like kind of come out of grief. And it's like, I've got, this is one of the things on my heart. One of them was to republish this book in a hardcover and make the stuffed toy, which I did this year. And I've got to just go for the show. I have to. And then I have to see what happens. Yeah. It's okay if it does. It's not really okay with me if it doesn't work, but it will be <laughs> because I will accept it with A R T. Art of acceptance. It yeah. will, but yeah. I have to go for it. So yeah. I'm planning, I'm planning to shoot a pilot in Sicily this summer. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there and just gonna do it. <laughs> and, for, and I love it. And I know you're gonna get there. And for everyone who's listening. First and foremost, if you know anybody who can help Carol make that real, please, you know, make an introduction, reach out to her. You know, that's one of the reasons why I asked that question. And I want to make sure that, because there's a lot of people who listen and they know people and who knows, if you can help Carol help others, you're doing a big service in the world and it comes back. And so please make sure to reach out. And so Carol, if you could go back in time and speak with your 18 year old self, Ooh, what would you share with her? Knowing what you know now. The You're already perfect, exactly as you are. You were born perfect. And and I hope you can know that all the way now. Don't wait till you're 35 and lose your son. Do it now. Mm -hmm. Um there's nothing that you need to accomplish. You're already you're already there. You're already perfect, whole, complete, lovable. There's nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. Um, so just go out there and have fun you know <laughs> like do what you really want with your life and just go for it now you're not gonna always get it and you know it's gonna hurt sometimes and but that's life too and that's experience of life like when I'm on my deathbed I don't want to have never had pain either I mean less is better but <laughs> I do want to experience all of life um yeah so that's some stuff yeah. no, I love it and for anyone listening I want you to notice what, at least in my experience, one of the most common themes that so many of us go through is we have, and it's for various reasons, it's part of like social media, it plays a part, upbringing, societal norms, all that stuff plays a part, but we've got these insecurities, we've got these, I need to be a certain way and be perceived rather a certain way mm -hmm. in order for me to be normal or validated or special or loved, important, any of these things. And notice that you know, I often tell people, it's like you're wearing a mask. And the mask is who I hope that you think I am. Mm. And the thing is, even when you win that game of wearing the mask and people like you, you lose. Because you know deep down that they like the mask. They don't know you. Mm -hmm. And people bring that into relationship. People bring that into so many aspects of their life. What if, as an experiment for the next 30 days, you took the mask off and you just vowed to be your authentic self? What if you vowed to value your opinion of you more than other people's opinion of you? Oh, oh. And, and what if you vowed to live your version of your dream life instead of other people's version of your life? What could change? And obviously be loving, be respectful, but remember it, it is your life. Mm. And coming from that space, like, you know, it's funny, I, have, I was on a podcast not too long ago and the person said, if you could give one piece of advice that you haven't already given in the last like hour. And at first I was like, what the hell else am I going to say? And then <laughs> I'm like, I just said everything. And then they were like, oh. and the only thing that came to mind, which is it's the most basic piece of advice you could get. And yet it's one of the most profound and it's just be you. Mm. That's what you just said on the surface. I'm like, well, it should be the easiest thing in the world. Nothing is required. Just be you. Right. And yet we've built up so many layers against being ourselves because we have so many judgments about ourselves mm -hmm. that we think we're not okay mm -hmm. and so like you just said you know you're perfect whole and complete as you are that doesn't mean you can't improve it doesn't mean you can't grow right but as you are 
as you know, one of my favorite words is enthusiasm. It comes from entheos or antetheos, and it means the God within, that divine wow. spark. And if you identify as that, if you were to say, I am this divine spark of divinity, I am unique, am I being me? Or am I just pretending, am I wearing that mask and pretending to be other people? The thing that's going to help you make the difference you're meant to make in this world, the thing that's going to bring people to you, mm-hmm. that's going to attract them to you, almost like the, what, like the moth or the fly to that light. But it's funny, the lighthouse probably would have been better because the moth is a little <laughs> graphic. But the point being, the thing that draws people to you is that unique you. When you radiate that, life has a way of working out so beautifully. But very often, you can only do that if you're living from love, from trust, from faith. But if you're playing small, living from fear, whether it's conscious or unconscious, intentional or unintentional, it's not going to give you the life that you want. And so amen to Carol's uh, advice to 18-year-old Carol. <laughs> and so and it, going forward, we went to the past, now going into the future. If you met future you, ooh, ooh, like she, it. she lives one year from today and she's achieved all the success that you want, including this Food Bliss show. How would she advise you now? Relax. You're already doing it. It's okay. You'll get there. You are getting there. You're already getting there. Yeah. Yeah. That to me, I had one of those little epiphanies not too long ago. <laughs> and I think they keep coming throughout our life, but it's so easy to get caught up in, the, in, our, in our process. And we think our own judgment that we should be further along than we are. And it's like, what if so going back to the whole non-resistance perspective, what if you just fully embraced, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. And the, and the evidence, the proof is I'm here. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Like, given the throwback to earlier, it's supposed to be raining, and the proof is that it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the yeah. only proof you need. So it's like <laughs> the proof that I am where I'm supposed to be is because I'm here. And so given everything in my life up until this point, all the decisions I made and didn't make and anything else, this is where it's gotten me. So mm-hmm. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Now, do I like it or not? That's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I can make some choices. But just the idea of, you know, you're on your path, you're on your process, you're doing the steps, you're going up the mountain and you're going to get there. Just keep going. Like, yeah, it's beautiful advice. And it's so, I think, grounding because it comes from that place of acceptance and that place of peace. Yes, yes. Mm, So good, so good. Carol, what's the biggest risk that you've taken that you're deeply grateful for and why? Um, Well, I feel like I'm going to cry. Um. I think like living again after losing TJ. Yeah. Um, that was really scary. And, you know, like, woof. And, you know, it took a lot to do that. I had to, I had to give up, you know, my, my relationship. And um, there were a lot of really, really tough decisions that I did not want to do, but I committed to myself to live again. And it was the scariest thing that I've ever done. And um, the best thing that I've ever done. It's way easier not to, let me tell you. It's way easier to curl up in a ball and just forget this noise. I mean, that's too much work, but um, it's just so much better to do it. I mean, it's so much better to do it. I just, and I've told you this over and over again, but I have immense respect and love for you. And just getting to hear you say that, to choose to live again. That is the, on the surface, it's, not, it, it, it's simultaneously the hardest thing to do. And like you said, like the easiest in the sense that the alternative is so much more painful, that it's worth it. But like, it takes so much strength and courage to be able to do that. And I wanna make sure people know, remember courage doesn't mean fearless. Mm-hmm. Courage means you're afraid, but you do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so the decision that Carol made that, you know, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to make the best that I can of this. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to be happy again. I'm going to make him proud. I'm going to make a difference in the world because of this. Like all these wonderful things. Just so so much respect for you, Cal. Thank you for sharing. And so on a happier note, what are you excited about right now that you're working on? Ooh, what am I excited about right now that I'm working on? Well, I just finished a rehab on my property upstate, which was yesterday which is very very exciting um 
and I am working on this donation program for the gift of the ladybug. We're actually, I, I spoke to a, a friend of mine from high school and we're going to do something really fun, I think with nationwide children's hospital, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. And, um, there's a lot of fun partnerships and things happening with the gift of the ladybug and hospitals and make a wish and Ronald McDonald house and things like that. That's so fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm working on putting together this food bus pilot, which is mm -hmm. really, really fun. And, um, grief relief courses mm -hmm. and, um, how to take back your holidays courses and all kinds of stuff in the hopper right now. Amazing. Amazing. One thing that you just sparked in my mind, can you please share with us some of the goals you have? I know there's some financial milestone goals for the donations for Make-A-Wish and the impact oh, you have. Yeah, sure. It's a hundred thousand dollars in the next three years and a million in my lifetime to yeah. make a wish. And that's okay. If it's product, if it's, you know, in the form of product or cash, it's going to be both. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I love it. And I hope I want people to really just be with sometimes when numbers get bigger, we don't necessarily see what they equate to. And yeah. that hundred thousand and then after that million and beyond the impact that's going to have, you know, Carol shared a story earlier about that gentleman and, and his child. And like, I got my son back. Imagine that times like a million and like <laughs> the impact oh. that's going to be had is spectacular. And again, I strongly, I have my own, uh, polka dot uh, stuffy and uh, book over here on the corner. And it's like, if you're feeling called to it, if you're feeling inspired to serve and to help a family and help a child, please, you know, click the link, support Carol's mission and, and just contribute to making a difference. It's such a beautiful thing. And so Carol, how can our listeners learn more and connect with you? Oh, thank you for that. You're so great. Um, they can go to carolmack.com. They can go to giftoftheladybug.com. They can go to wineforfood.com um, for shows and recipes and articles and food and wine pairing. And they can go to at carolwithane.mac on Instagram and just kind of keep up with anything that's going on. Mm, so, so wonderful. And anyone who's listening and not on the video, you know, the four was the number four. Is that correct? That's the number four. Wine for food with the number Wine four. Again, four food. Yeah. I'll have all the links in the show notes so they're easy to click and find. Oh, great. Carol, and thank you so, so much for taking the time to be with us today, for sharing so many inspiring lessons for everyone. And I strongly encourage everyone who's listening, if any aspect of this resonated, not only share it, but go through it again, you know, really be with it, learn the lessons that Carol's explaining and sharing. Yeah, there's an old expression, you're never going to live long enough to make, what is it? Learn from the mistakes of others because you're never going to live long enough to make them all yourself. That's good. And so you can substitute the word mistake from learn from the lessons of others. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you're never going to live long enough. And nor would you probably want to go through all the different things yourself. Like why not learn from other people so that you can shift right now? Right? Yes. <laughs> and Carol, before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, I would. I mean, I just have to take a few minutes to thank you. I mean, I would love for your audience to just know the impact that you had on me, which has been so, so extraordinary. I mean, I feel like you're kind of a therapist and a business coach and a cheerleader and a friend and a little bit Buddha, <laughs> not Buddha, but you know what I mean? Buddha-esque. <laughs> I can talk to you for hours and hours and hours, but every time, I mean, I have three notebooks worth of... <laughs> notes that I come back to and come back to and come back to, because you've really just made such a profound impact on my life. And the thing that you did most for me was the release work that we did in the beginning of our sessions, which was very therapeutic. And it just helped me shed like 12 false beliefs. And that right there at the end of that, I can remember thinking right there was worth like 10, 10 times the price of a mission, just that. And we haven't even started our regular coaching yet. So you really have made a difference in my life. And thank you so much. Like, wow, so much. And then to your listeners, thank you for listening and listening to my story. I so appreciate you. And just know that you're perfect exactly as you are. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carol. And so for everyone listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, I encourage you to please leave a review. It really helps on Apple or wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you can get updated when any new episodes get released. As I said before, you know my life's work is to help leaders, champions, and high performers to create an extraordinary life without regret. 
And if I can be of support to serve you, please connect with me at jamilsayage.com. And you can also connect with me on Instagram at Dr. Jamil Sayage, just DR and then my name. And Facebook is just Jamil Sayage. I'll also have the links in the show notes. So Carol, thank you again for being here. Everyone who's tuning in, really appreciate you. And what I found over the years in my work with clients is that most people's favorite day to change their life is tomorrow. And that's why they stay stuck. But you can be different. For you, transformation can start today. So I want you to ask yourself, what will I do as a result of what I heard here today? What will future me thank me for, like Carol alluded to earlier? Get clear on that, then go do it. Create a meaningful day. Love you guys. Thank you for being with us today. If this conversation served you, it would mean a lot if you left a review and shared this with anyone who may benefit. An extraordinary life without regret is available to you now. Choose it. It's your time.